Hi, my name is PK Gulati. I'm the founder of The Assembly. If you're here, you're probably watching an Assembly workshop. We do these workshops every week, and these are prepared by the Assembly team in Dubai. These workshops cover ideas from data sciences, hardware design, automation, robotics, drones, and all the other exponential technologies that can, you can think about. The idea is for us to learn more than what curriculum teaches us. And we are trying to bring people to start working with their own hands with these technologies which have the capacity of changing the world. So welcome to this workshop and learn more about new wonders what you can build. Hello everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Welcome back to another session and today's session is going to be a very interesting one because we'll be showing you how you can make your own screen recorder using just Python. So let's get started. All right, so before we begin, let's get to know what the assembly is. So the assembly is a smart lab based out of N5 since December 2014. And over the course of around seven years, we've done over 300 free workshops. Now these workshops are divided into three categories, which are code, hack, and data science workshop. Hack workshops are the workshops that deal with the hardware and software and embedded systems and all that. Code workshops, on the other hand, are solely software based, like the workshop that we are going to do today is a code workshop. And finally, we have the data science workshops that deal with software, uh, that deal with AI, machine learning, and all those kind of umbrella terms. Our target audience are students, entrepreneurs, and professionals. We focus on smart technology and practical application, and we try to implement these solutions and show how they are done in our workshops. You can join us on our forum, which is member.theassembly.ae. Also, don't forget to connect to us on our social media. We are there on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, by the handle of at Make Smart Things, and on YouTube on the channel of The Assembly. We've been using screen recorders a lot lately because most of the presentations and of course due to the pandemic there are a lot of uh, online education that's going on so students usually do their or submit their courseworks or presentations online and of course for the meetings as well you have sometimes there have there are softwares that you want to record and uh, show to show the output so screen recorders are probably used you have you might have used softwares like OBS or Bandicam to do the screen recording but in today's workshop we'll be showing you how you can code your own uh, screen recorder with just OpenCV and Python. So for those of you who don't know, OpenCV is an open source computer vision and machine learning, learning uh, software library in Python. So it was built to provide a common infrastructure for computer vision applications and to accelerate the use of machine perception in the commercial products. Being a BSD licensed product, it makes it easy for businesses to utilize and modify the code. So it's a very useful piece of uh, software, uh, OpenCV, that we can use alongside Python, which is by far uh, the most used uh, uh, programming language nowadays. And we can create our own software. So let's begin and let's start by coding our screen recorder. All right, so let's start our coding. So open up Visual Studio code or any other uh, IDE that you like and first we need to install some libraries I've already installed them but for the purposes of this tutorial you'll need uh, PIL CV2 and Win32 API so you can easily install those by just typing in pip install followed by the name of the library so in this case we just need PIL and we need uh, uh, opencv contrib we need opencv contrib and finally we need the win32 api win32 api uh, not qpi api so you can go ahead and install this from the terminal uh, from uh, in the terminal or from the command line whatever you prefer you can go ahead and install I, i'll not be doing it because i already have them done so so to start off let's import First, uh, our PIL, which will allow us to uh, grab the images. So, from PIL, we will import image grab, and this will allow us to actually grab the images. Image grab. 
there we have it then what we need to do next is very simple uh, we can uh, use minimal code to make our very simple version of the screen recorder so what we'll do is create a while loop because we wanted to record uh, for the entire duration so we'll just have a while true loop and yes within our while true what we want is we want to grab the image so we will say create uh, create any variable so if, in, uh, in this case i'll just create image equals and then call the image grab dot grab so this will grab whatever is happening on my screen and then we need to pass it some arguments so the first argument is of course a b box yes and uh, then it takes some other arguments as you can see so it takes the the first two arguments are going to be zero zero and then it takes the width and the height of the screen that you want to capture for now we can just give it any random value to just test out if our code works but uh, later we'll give it another uh, other values which you will see so next what we need to do is we need to convert our image into a numpy array so for that we need to quickly import our numpy so we'll just go to the top and say import numpy and if you are already don't have it uh, have numpy installed you can simply install numpy by just typing in pip install numpy on the terminal and that should be it uh, next we need to create another variable for our second variable to store the numpy array so we can just call it image underscore np equals and then we'll just convert that uh, the, our previous image to a numpy array so that is very simple so we'll just say oh wait, numpy dot array and we'll pass in our image so that's pretty much it that should have that should convert our image into a numpy array now that's that's pretty much it so uh, what we need to do now is we can say uh, cv2 we can call the cv2 to create a window and then to, uh, to create a frame and then show us the video so cv2 dot i am show and before we actually do that we need to import cv2 so yes and since i used np at the bottom i need to say as np so we import numpy as np and then cv2 dot i am show and then give, we can give it any name i'll just give it screen recorder and then the second is what we need it to show so we need it to show the image underscore np and that should be it and uh, one last thing that we want to do is we want to have uh, not here, here cv2 dot wait key wait key and then just pass it 10 or something and let's try running in running our code let's head to our terminal and and see so there you see you can see we get our so the our screen is there it's not recording but still you get the idea that it's the output is there so it's basically recording whatever it's there on our screen but it does not record everything that's there on our screen so it's the it's only capturing a part of what it should be because what we had said uh, so let me just first stop this code running so there we declared it as 700 by 700 so it's only capturing that area of the screen so it's only capturing the top 700 by 700 pixel area of the screen and leaving the rest behind so one way we can combat this issue is firstly you if you know your dimensions by heart of the screen you can type them out but that's not very scalable and that's not something that everyone uh, will remember so what you can do is for this purpose we need a library called uh, the win32 api which we uh, install so in case you don't have it i just told you how you install you can go pip install and win32 api so from you simply import that so from win32 api you want to get some import something that is called get system metrics now what this will allow you to do is it will allow you to get the uh, basically what it says it will allow you to get system metrics so it will give you information such as your screen weight screen height and all that so get system metrics 
all right now what we can do is we can create two variables over here uh, one for the width uh, no, I have to spell it right one for the width and uh, so I can just call in get system metrics and then pass in zero so zero is basically for the width and one will be for the height so we'll create the variable height for in a similar manner so we'll just say get system metrics and we will obviously pass one over here now this should what it should do is it should now get the entire uh, or let me just print it out for you and uh, show it show what I mean so we'll just print width and uh, we'll also have another one for print height okay so I did I forgot an M over here so let me correct that quickly and it should fix the error now and let's see so yeah there you have it so okay we're not interested in this what we're actually interested in this so these are the two values so it tells me that the width of my screen is 1366 and the height is 768 so what we can do now is instead of manually giving in the values we can just put the width and height there and that's it it will just capture the entire screen rather than us giving it the numbers every single time so we come here and we'll say width and instead of the 700 over here we'll just pass in our height and make sure we correct it right spell it right right moment of truth let's test it again and voila so now it's recording the entire screen it's a bit hard to see at first because but it's recording the entire screen right now so it's working as it's uh, so let's move ahead and actually make it record so now that we've got our screen entire screen captured now we want to record it and then save it on our computers so for that and before we actually get into that let me just make this so right now what happens is we have to go to our terminal every single time and uh, close the window so I don't want that to happen so instead what we can do is we can assign a key that if we press that key it will just stop recording so a very simple way to do that would be to just come here and type in if cv2 dot wait key equal equal oh sorry equal equal or and then the q key so what this basically means is if i press the q key on my keyboard there is something that should happen and what should happen is it should break out of the loop and when it break out, breaks out of the loop it will stop the image uh, the capturing and everything so yeah now that we've got that part figured out what we can move on to is to record the act record the video so for that we need uh, we need to encode and decode the video but python takes care of that for us so it's very simple to encode and decode in python so we can just simply create a variable called 4cc or anything and then you can say cv2 dot video writer video writer not with uh, okay yeah, this one no, video writer the 4cc and then it takes four arguments now for those four arguments just pass in m p and for the third one four and make sure all of these are passed in as strings and not just characters or numbers so yeah that's it so you just say 4cc equals cv2 dot video writer and pass in those four mp4v and that should be it now what we want to do is we want to convert uh, capture or actually record our video so we can create a variable called uh, video capture let's just name it video capture and then we can say cv2 dot video writer and over here what essentially we are doing is we are saving the file onto our system so first we need to pass in the name of the file so for now I can just give it uh, test right test dot uh, mp4 and then the second argument is our 4cc now the third is the frame rate so let me just give it 20 
and the last argument will be the width and height so the width and the height we don't need to manually type it because we already are getting that from our win32 api now the good thing about this is even if you uh, run it on different laptops it will run just as fine because you're getting the uh, aspect ratio from the system parameters themselves so that's taken care of all right and one last line that we need to actually save the file is before over here just after i am sure we need to actually save that so we'll just say video capture dot write and then pass in our final image so and that will be image underscore np and this should recall our video all right so let's see the output and our code so there it is it's it's showing us all everything now if you if i press q it closes it so that's working now the moment of truth we need to go to our folder and see so as you can see in the folder where i have my uh, scripts it says that it has created a file called test.mp4 let's actually check so yeah it, it did record for the duration i uh, before i pressed the q so it did record that part so yeah our screen recording is working perfectly now one thing you might notice is that there is a sl slight color discrepancy in the video that is because of the way the rgb because we didn't convert rgb to bgr so that is pretty simple we can just go over here and uh, right when we say over here so instead of just having this so we can say image np equals cv2 dot convert cvt color and then we can pass in what we want to convert that is that will be the Im numpy image the, the numpy array image and then the second one is what do we want to convert it to so it will be cvt dot color underscore wait it's not cvt cv2 sorry <laughs> cv2 dot color underscore and then you have to look for something called bgr to rgb so uh, rgb gr to rgb yes there one so now it should show you all the colors properly as well and let's give that a try go back to our terminal run our code and yeah as you can see the yellow is yellow and nothing's been changed so the colors are working fine and uh, yeah let's see our recording oh it's okay okay so there is a slight issue over here the issue is that when we record another recording it just overwrites the previous one so and we don't want to we don't want that to happen because let's say if you're imp recording important stuff and then it gets overwritten or something that is a big mess so in order to avoid that we can simply have it uh, named according to the timestamp so instead of passing in the name manually over here you can just give it uh, fn as in for file name and then we'll create a variable called file name over here so that is very simple to do so what we'll do is we will get the current time a current timestamp and then based on that we will name the, our files so we'll create a variable called timestamp so ts for timestamp to store the timestamp so we'll call date time date time dot date time dot now and then we have to format this into a string format so we'll use str f9 and then here we have to pass in the format that we want the output to be in so in our case we want the format to be in year month day and then hour minute seconds but you can obviously change according to your own preferences but i would like to keep it that way so year is with a capital y and then dash with uh, a month and month is percentage and then small m and then the day is also lowercase d and for the r it's uppercase h and uppercase m for minutes and uppercase s for seconds so this is the format that we want so we want year dash month dash day space r dash minute dash second so 
now that this is taken care of what we want to do is we want to save it. we want to uh, give okay before I go any further and forget about that we also need to import date time so yes and now we need to create our uh, variable fn so that is simple we just have to say fn equals and then pass in our f string and what this f string will do is it will basically convert our timestamp and then give it dot mp4 at the end so it will take the value from the timestamp so basically the hour months day sorry the year months day and the hour or basically the timestamp and then dot add and dot mp4 extension to it and then save the file with that name now let's save this and run it and see if it actually works so we have it running okay we can stop the code and go back and check if so right there you can see that it created a file and it saved it with the current timestamp now let me show you what happens if i run another uh, run it another time and stop it and go back to the file so instead of overwriting this time it just created another file with a different name unique name and it have it has two different files that are storing videos right so now you can go one step ahead of this and instead of having just a plain uh, screen recorder you can also add yourself to it so basically it also records your face while you are doing stuff on the screen so that is very simple to add so what we can do is we can create another uh, open uh, cv to capture so we'll just come here uh, before our while true loop and we can create a variable called cam and then we can name it cv2 dot video capture and then pass in zero now usually zero is for the primary camera that is associated with your device if you have a web uh, if you have a built-in webcam it should be zero if you have an external webcam however then it might have a different number one or two based on the number of devices that you add on so in my case i'll be using the camera of my laptop so i'll just go ahead and put in zero if you want to use an external camera make sure you change this to one or some other and try if you have only one external camera one should be fine then what we need to do is we need to also read this frame so inside our while true loop we'll come back and inside over here we will say uh, we'll create underscore comma frame we'll read the frame and then we'll just say cam dot read cam dot uh, read so this will get the uh, frames from our cap uh, our camera now we don't only want to show the camera as a separate uh, window in uh, or like we don't want two separate windows one for the screen recording and one for the camera what we want to be done is uh, something that can so we essentially want the camera our face to be overlaid on top of the image or the screen recording that is already going on so that we can have both the images in the, at the same time so in order to do that it is pretty simple uh, for that we first need to get the height and width of the frame that we are reading and then based on that we can position it in uh, in anywhere or over the on the screen recording that we are doing so to get the frame uh, height and width is pretty simple we can just say frame dot sorry frame dot height or not sorry uh, create variables we can just have them fh for frame height and fw for frame width and then we can have them store get the value so to get the value we can just say frame dot shape frame dot shape and yep that should do it lastly what we can do is we need to overlay the image on or the output of the camera onto the output from our screen recorder so what we need to do is we need to say Im image and then uh, image np which is our final or the screen recorder image and then we need to get the rightmost part of it and then to that part overlay 
our webcam image. So that will be height, height minus frame height, and then everything after that, and width minus frame width, and then everything after that equals to frame. And for the frame, it's pretty simple. You just get everything. So you get everything from zero to the frame height. Then you get everything from zero till the frame width. And finally, that's it. So that's it. Let's try running our code. And there you see, you can see me there. <laughs> and it's recording. So, uh, yes, let's just go somewhere else, do something, come back over there, and let's just close it now. So, I pressed Q and it finished recording. Now, let me hit F5 on this, and this is the latest one over here. As you can see, we have all the output over here. Now, it's going fast because I have increased the speed on my VLC. So, this is it should be yes like so yeah it's recording uh, it's recording my screen as well as my face so yeah it's working as it's as it should so yeah that's it for today i hope you guys learned something new and of course there are obviously still ways you can improve it you can change the placement of the feed from the camera and you can make it small you can resize it you can do lots of things and really it's up to you about how you can uh, how you want to customize it so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed it and that's it for today all right so that's it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for much more similar content and this is me amar signing off i'll catch you in the next one bye